What is going on guys? Welcome back to the Fitment Industries YouTube channel. Today, we have JT's Porsche... Cayman S. 2006. Cayman, Cayman S, 2006. Yeah. We're here to address this issue we got right here. Yeah, he doesn't this, like the wheel gap. This is not cool. You can almost fist it. Like, I mean sideways you can, but. And so what we're gonna do to fix that is we got these D2 air struts and some airlift management. It's gonna be kind of a pain in the ass to pull all this apart, but hopefully we can do it in a day or two and get this thing on the ground. And we're gonna take you along our journey with that. And we're gonna show you how to install air suspension in your car. This one's gonna be installing air suspension for dummies. All right, let's jack this thing up and get these wheels off. Yeah. So now that the car is up in the air, we got the wheels off, it's time to take a look at what we have to put in and kind of what you should expect in your air suspension package. First of all, obviously you're gonna have your air struts, which consists of kind of a regular shock or a strut with an air spring. Those are gonna have fittings in it. Sometimes they're installed already for you, sometimes they are not. From there, you're gonna wanna find the tank. Sometimes these have the air compressor inside of them. Most of the time they do not. So there's gonna be some fittings for that. They're gonna go right here. We'll show you some of that a little later. Then here is your actual air pump. It's gonna make all kinds of noise and fill that tank with air, which will then fill your struts. From there, you got some of your hardware and some of those extra pieces for that. And then maybe one of the most important parts, you got a wiring harness. And this is gonna be for your electronics that are gonna control you know, how much air stays in those struts to make them longer and shorter, stiffer or softer. You got your little controller here. You're gonna have kind of an ECU box and a couple other wires in here. Your airline, you can get your airline in two different diameters. Usually you have quarter inch and three eighths. If you want your car to air out really, really fast and then also air up really, really fast, get the three eighths. If you want it to be a little more smooth, make it a little more cool, makes a little more noise for longer, get the quarter inch line. I think this is kind of the way to go. How do I segue from here? Now that we've made a smooth transition over to the car, we're gonna go over the air strut and kind of take a peek at what we might need to do. So three bolts on top that's gonna to mimic the stock. And then on the bottom, this is just smooth. There's no hardware or anything in here. And that's actually because the control arm on this has like a clamp and it clamps this bad boy in. So there's gonna be one bolt holding that in, some hardware for the ABS and stuff like that. And then these three bolts on top, it should be pretty simple in the front. So I guess let's just get this, let's get the stock stuff out. We're just gonna. So in order to pull the strut out of that pocket, we gotta be able to pull and push down the control arm. So we're gonna have to undo the sway bar to allow us to get some travel. We're gonna have that sway bar bolt, we're gonna have that bottom bolt to open that bracket, and we're gonna lower the car down and get to those three bolts on the top. So we got all the hardware out. This thing's really easy to push down. You can see it moves around the strut moves out of that socket. So now we just gotta take the three bolts off the top and we'll be able to drop this thing out. Oh, yeah. All right, if anybody wants to buy this bullshit, let me know. <laughs> so before we put these bad boys in, we want to go ahead and measure up, well, the adjustable portion of the threaded body itself and make sure they're even side to side. We're going to leave them kind of about where they came in the box. We're just going to make sure that they're even. That way the thing's not sitting all lopsided and then we can get this thing level with the management. First thing we're going to do is we're going to set one kind of where we want it. Then we're going to measure it and then copy and paste over here. Tighten this bad boy down make that a little bit permanent. We'll be able to get that tighter once it's in the car, but as long as we can just get it to stay the way it is now, we should be golden. We're gonna measure this from the top of this perch to the bottom of that perch, and it's exactly one and three quarters inches. So I'm just gonna literally reapply that over here. It just needs a little bit of adjustment, not that much. Triple check. That should be about perfect. So we're gonna get these tight, reverse order. And then once it's in the car, we can adjust where anything else needs to go from there. Let's get this thing in the car. All right, so everything's even. It's kind of reverse order of how we took it all apart. So slide this bad boy in, avoid the paint job, you know. All right, so moving on to the rear, which is usually honestly easier, but on this specific, you know, exotic Porsche application, the engine's in the friggin' middle, so uh, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated. Most systems aren't gonna be like this, but here we have to do the sway bar. Uh, there's like three friggin' ball joints and the axle has to come out and then like the whole interior has to come apart to get the bolts. Let's get to work, boy. Hello? Hello, I hear you. Hello. Hi. Hi. 
Hello. Can I fucking help you? Yeah, tell me what's going on. Are you tired, Sean? Yes. As what I time is it? I, I don't know, 9 30, 10? Alright, it's like a three hour day. It's not a three hour day, it's a really long it's day. Eight, it's 8 50, Sean. It's 8 50, okay. It's, yeah, it's basically 9 o'clock. It's, right, it's so getting late. Like I said, the rear is going to be complicated. So I went to go on both the sway bar and there's like a brake line bracket that holds a bunch of other stuff. I just, we got to remove a bunch of everything in order to do the thing we need to do. And I'm getting frustrated. There's just so much stuff. So the reason we're taking off all these ball joints and all these control arm pieces and the sway bar and everything like that is we want to get as much extension downward as we can of that lower control arm in order to be able to get that strut, you know, out of the hole. It just makes it a whole lot easier. It'd be kind of impossible without it. So it is necessary. I, I'm rambling. Why are you laughing? No, no, you're good. Because you said get it out of the hole. <laughs> you're not supposed to laugh at what? The, the best set has two fucking Allen wrenches. Hell in it. yeah. <laughs> exactly what we need to take off the caliper. You may have noticed we didn't take these off are, the caliper in the I don't front. know, these are fucking fat ones though. They might fit. Let's try those. We wow. didn't take the front one off because we didn't have to. The line was long enough. We weren't putting a bunch of stress on it. It was fine. In the back, it's kind of tight. We haven't even undone any of the other stuff yet. So we're gonna take this off, hang it off to the side. We're, we're not stretching those lines and messing that up in the process. You don't want to wreck that stuff. Welcome to Sean's Tech Tips. Today, we're gonna show you how to add some leverage without having a big dumb wrench, I guess. Oh, you can put a socket on an extension and you can stick that on the Allen wrench that's trying to check off your caliper and get a little bit more leverage since they're really, really tight. Thank you for coming to my classroom. Bye. Oh, I'm gonna stuff it in here. What's up? My PT Cruiser GT had a get drag transmission. Hey, nice. <laughs> Oh yeah. Uh, what are you doing? What am I doing? There's no f***ing 20s, dude. Well, where could they have gone? I don't know, but the only two f***ing drawers with wrenches in them have no 20s. I swear to God, if I walk my ass over there and I find a 20. Yeah, you find a 20, you, I'll f***ing, I don't even know. Hey, it's look, I found his, it. It's probably not even his fault. <laughs> you found the 20? Milwaukee. Oh, hey. Uh, so we got a bunch of stuff unbolted on the bottom. So now we're ready to go to the top to get the three undone so we can pull it out and stuff. So we have to tear apart the interior to get to that. And by we, I mean the guy that owns the car. I'm going to make him do the I got to get all these work. plastics out and try not to break any clips. Probably going to suck. I'm expecting to break a few, but I think that's we'll the metal. Good luck. So when you compress and store air, you are inevitably gonna get some moisture. So on the bottom of the tank is a drain. First, we're gonna start with this 90 degree elbow. That's gonna go right in there to our quarter inch line. That's gonna run to this T. And this T is gonna have a pressure relief valve on it just in case it needs to be relieved of its pressure. And then another line's gonna run from there. And we're gonna have this fill check drain. I don't even know if it's a check valve, honestly. I'll have to double check that. But either way, you can fill and empty it here to empty the water out of your tank when you need to, especially if you're gonna drive this thing in any sort of cold climate or where there's a lot of temperature differences, that's gonna make a lot of moisture in this thing. So we just didn't finish the drain install on this tank so that you can evacuate the water out of it. But when there is the inevitable water in the tank, how do you keep it out of the manifold and out of your bags? We're well, gonna be able to do that with this right here. This is a water and air separator. This is gonna take water in the air and not let it into that manifold and into the air bags. Now, this is only one way flowing. On these, you are gonna see an arrow with an in and then it points and then this is the out. So it is only gonna go on one way and you're gonna want that obviously in line. So, uh, yeah. All right, so all the fittings are on the tank and you're kind of ready to start putting things in, but, what? but I don't remember. First, we still gotta run these lines. And the way I like to do it is I like to put my lines in first and then kind of stack things on as we get closer to completion. So the first thing you gotta do to get your lines in is you gotta find some grounds. You gotta find a way to get the lines from the struts or outside of the car to the inside of the car. And the best way to do that is to find your factory holes that are covered with rubber grommets. I don't know where I'm going with this. So you're probably gonna have to pull some carpet out. You're gonna find a little, they look like this if you don't know what you're looking for. Start from the inside, kind of see where a good way to go would be. And then you're gonna have to get under your car and either locate the grommets you took out or find a new one and then try to find those from the bottom. Then something I learned by doing it wrong the first time is start kind of from the top and feed in. I struggled a lot from the bottom trying to like get it up in the hole and do one of these when I realized if you just put it this way, you can just grab it. So uh, yeah, let's run these lines and then we'll start putting hardware in. 
So now that we found our grommet to stick our hoses through, I want to show you another trick that I learned. Um, I like to take two of these lines and stick it through and pull them down. That way I can run both driver and passenger side kind of at the same time. And then all I really have to do is pull extra through and then I can cut the line, have a little extra, and then this becomes my new line that I can then run to the back as well. And then it all comes back to this trunk area and there's no really going back and forth. It saves a ton of time. So we didn't want to bore you with the monotonous stuff of installing the airlines because it is kind of different for every vehicle. So we'll just run through that really quick of what we did. Essentially, we just ran the airlines through that grommet that we were just looking at. And then we want to follow the brake lines of the car. You know, that's, that's a safe place. It's out of the way. It's engineered to be a safe place for everything. So if you follow that stuff, you should be good. Just make sure to keep it away from any exhaust. Up in the wheel well, we did want to give it a little slack because that's going to be moving around, doing some turning and stuff like that. And then in the back, we ran it along the firewall to make that square that you probably only have to do in a mid or rear engine vehicle. Yeah. You want to check out the trunk that's not totally, but it's good, it, like it's function. it look, it functions. Yeah, so coming around to the back of the car, we got kind of a mock-up setup. A little bit rough, obviously nothing's hard mounted yet, but essentially we're gonna want the tank to be sitting far enough for me to be able to open my oil fill right here. The compressor is hidden away down tucked in this corner nice and neat. Uh, all the lines are ran through like we said through the, up through the underbody through a grommet and the firewall by the motor. Um, the wiring harness starts back here running power to everything. Comes up over this strut perch here down the carpet tucked nice and neat through the interior up here past the fuse box up under the dash and then through a grommet into the front with the battery uh, we got the controller coming through right here that's tucked up nice and neat with the harness over the fuse box uh, up over the pedals and then out to me through the center console i'll eventually have that mounted probably on the vent or something so the setup actually turned out really really nice especially with having that compressor off in the corner it keeps things nice and quiet and tolerable which is really important. So that's about gonna wrap it up for uh, installing air suspension for dummies. It's it's actually really simple. It's just coilovers with airlines and a compressor and a manifold. That's kind of all there is to it. So if you guys are looking to take your ride to the next level with air suspension, you guys know where to go. Come see the experts at fitmentindustries.com. I'm Sean at SeanBeta.fi on Instagram. And if you wanna follow along with the build at all, it's at JTSFI on Instagram. And we'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace. Peace.